Hi, welcome to Bakes and Blenders. I'm Colleen and today we are going to go over how to make perfectly smooth, perfectly creamy American buttercream. Okay, so I'm getting started with an entire pound of unsalted butter in my stand mixer. Now today I'm using my brand new scraper attachment. Um, normally I just use a regular paddle attachment. So let's see how this works making buttercream. Now to get that perfectly smooth and creamy American buttercream, we're gonna beat our butter for at least five minutes, but I like to do about eight to 10 minutes. Start on low and work your speed up to about a medium speed. Okay. Now, the reason we beat the butter that long is it's going to lighten the butter in color and in texture. Look at that. I mean, goodness, that looks good enough to eat. I mean, I like butter, but I don't know. I guess I'm not really gonna eat it just like that. Now, later, we will knock out some of this air so that our buttercream doesn't have any air pockets and bubbles in it so it's perfectly smooth. But for right now, this is exactly what we want. Now while your butter is beating, if you have just the regular paddle attachment, you're gonna wanna scrape your bowl down um, every few minutes. Keep an eye on it to make sure everything gets well incorporated. If you do have the paddle attachment with the scraper, also keep an eye on your ingredients. If you see that there's butter building up up top, that's not getting incorporated, scrape that down right there. Okay. Oh my goodness, guys. Look at that. I mean, that just looks phenomenal. Okay. Now, we're adding, gonna add two pounds of powdered sugar, sifted powdered sugar, no less, to this, but we're not gonna add it all at once. So I like to do it in usually three to four additions. For one, you don't have that big explosion of powdered sugar when you get started. I also find that it just helps it combine better so that you get a creamier texture rather than one that's a little bit gritty. So I have all, all of that powdered sugar right here and I'm gonna put roughly a third into the bowl. Now once you've sifted all your powdered sugar, here's a fun little tip. That bag that is now empty, you can use it to rest your spatula on it so your counter doesn't get all covered in frosting. Just a little tip. Okay, now I also like to add heavy cream to my American buttercream. If you don't have heavy cream, milk works just fine. I do it too if I don't have cream on hand. So right now I'm just adding one tablespoon of heavy cream to help it all combine. And for another tip, even though we didn't put all of the powdered sugar in, there will be a little bit of a poof when we get started. So take a clean tea towel, kitchen towel, and drape it over your bowl, make sure it doesn't get in, and then turn your mixer on low give it some time to combine, and then you can take the towel away and slowly bump the mixer up until you get to about a medium, medium low, and then just mix for about a minute or two until it's combined. Okay, we're ready for our next addition. Before we add that powdered sugar though, you just want to scrape your bowl down. If you've got the scraper attachment, it's not um, as important, though I do find sometimes powdered sugar and butter can uh, get stuck around the top. So just scrape it down. And we're gonna add about another third of our powdered sugar. I might end up doing more than three additions. Doesn't matter. Add it slowly. and another tablespoon of cream or milk to help it combine. And 
And again, start on low, work your speed up, and just beat for a minute or two until combined. Okay. Our mixture is combined and it's not done yet. We still gotta add more sugar, but that is looking gorgeous. So, just like before, we're gonna add more powdered sugar. And looks like we're gonna do four additions today. Three or four is fine though. And another tablespoon of cream. And time to combine. Okay, scrape your bowl down. Once again, we are adding our final addition of powdered sugar. Now, this time I'm not going to add another tablespoon of cream or milk. We might add some later, but I don't want it to get too soupy on me. Um, so we're gonna combine this, then we'll do a taste test and get on with flavoring and coloring our buttercream. Okay, our buttercream has come together and it is looking pretty gorgeous. It's gorgeous and white and I bet it's tasty, although it doesn't have any flavor yet. It is a little on the thicker side, so we'll probably be adding some more cream. Okay, so this is where you can add your flavorings. First though, I'm gonna try a little sample and if you have a little baby spoon <laughs> lying around your house, this is perfect. So what I'm tasting for is to see if it's overpoweringly sweet, just right. Um, and if it's super sweet, you can add some salt. I always add just a tiny pinch of salt. Um, it, it helps cut through the sweetness. So taste it first and then add a little bit at a time until it's at the right level. Now we are making a mint flavored buttercream today. I'm going to be making a mint chocolate chip cake soon. So right here, mm, I've got some peppermint extract. Now I'm going to start with just a quarter teaspoon. You definitely don't want too much of this stuff. We're also going to add some green coloring. I have no idea how much to add. So let's just start with one drop and go from there. Okay, we're gonna start getting this beading. I'm probably gonna add some cream, but I'm gonna wait just a little bit. All right, time for another taste test. Get yourself a fresh spoon. No one wants a double dipper. The peppermint is good. I feel like it could use a little bit more peppermint though. So we're gonna do another quarter teaspoon, so that'll be a full half teaspoon of peppermint. And I'm also going to add another tablespoon of cream now. All right, let's get that mixing. Okay, so got my beautiful mint green frosting. This was one drop of blue and two drops of yellow of the Wilton food gel. And you can always adjust the colors for whatever you need. Okay, now I always make my frosting in advance. So it's just one thing I don't have to worry about the day I'm putting together a cake or some cupcakes. So this is going to go in the fridge for 
a day or two before I make the cake. And when I go to make the cake, I'm gonna add some chocolate to it, so it'll be mint chocolate chip. It's gonna be delicious. Now, my best tips for getting perfectly smooth, creamy, dreamy American buttercream, once you add the powdered sugar to your bowl, I never put my mixing speed above a four on my kitchen aid. So that's like a medium or a medium low. You want to combine it and you do want to incorporate a little bit of air because you want a nice light frosting. But that's how also how you get those ugly air bubbles when you're frosting your cake and it's not smooth, smooth and beautiful. So low and slow is even better. Now say you make your frosting and it's not perfectly smooth. It looks great, kind of. It tastes great, yes, but it's just not perfectly smooth. You want to just beat it, beat the heck out of it with a spatula that's nice and firm and sturdy, and that's going to knock out the air. You're going to have to do it longer than that. You're going to use a little bit of elbow grease. It's going to knock out the air. You're going to see it get nice and creamy and smooth, and it will be wonderful. Now you can always add a little bit more cream if it's not if it's too thick. That can help smooth it out. And if it gets too thin, you can always add more sifted powdered sugar. So that's about that for making delicious American buttercream. What I would like to know is, what is your favorite flavor of frosting? Because I'm always looking for some fun flavors. Or what is the craziest but still delicious flavor of frosting? I love hearing about those cool combinations. And if you have any tips for getting perfectly smooth, creamy, easy breezy American buttercream, drop those below, help us all out. And if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel so you get to see even more of my videos. Thank you so much for stopping by the Bakes and Blunders kitchen today. And I hope to see you around later. Happy baking. Wait, I forgot to mention this is my full batch of American buttercream. But if you don't need a full batch, if you're just doing a dozen cupcakes, you can find the recipe for my half batch in the video and in the blog post for my gluten-free marble cupcakes with vanilla frosting. Thought you might wanna know. Thanks for joining.